All right, so what I'm going to do now is teach you a little method that I use all the time for creating little interesting pieces of uh, stuff on armor. There's so many different ways to do this. I can't express it, but this is one of my favorites. So right now, I want to be able to, because this has a surface texture, right? Okay, let me go add a new layer. Because it has a surface texture, I want to do this. Go down here and hit Store Morph Target. Okay, then I'm going to go to the Layer Brush. And you can do this with any brush, mind you, but Layer is probably one of my favorites. And we can create an interesting shape. If you hold it and never click off of it, it'll make one layer that's at the same layer or level okay let's unclick it what if I want to trim this up some? maybe I made a mistake because I'm human and I can't create a very sharp edge in this area with one foul stroke well then you can go to the morph brush and now let's trim this up some this will morph it back to the original state where it had a texture on the surface of the armor. So it's kind of like an undo in brush form. We can create a lot of interesting things this way. If you want it to be more sharp, as far as its sharpness is concerned, we can use focal shift. Focal shift makes it very harsh as far as the transition between the first and second. Okay, a little bit of more focal shift and we can see that that fades quite well. So that is a great way to create very high detail in areas and make good patterns on metal. Hey, for a, just a piece of junk out of Blender, that's not too bad. I don't know what it is, but it looks pretty cool. Now, what if I wanted to mask off that one area and had a different texture on top of that? You're always, you always ask yourself, what if I need to do this? What happens? And you'll get a lot of questions answered before you sculpt the perfect female or the perfect demon. Well, the answer to that question is there is no real good way to do that not that I've found anyway there's mass by cavity which this doesn't have a succinct cavity this is a cavity change from here to here but this also has a cavity change here on this surface so there's no real good way to do that so the mass by cavity feature here doesn't work quite well for this operation what I found for this operation is just going in and doing some grunt work with a pretty small brush and masking its counter area. Just like that. So usually I do right next to the actual ornate piece. God, he made a video that just has him selecting some ornate piece on an actual object. Yes. I use rotate over here because rotate over here allows me to be inside without touching the geometry. 
So if I'm up close to a surface, a lot of times I'm, you'll see me go over here to rotate. I'll move this way also because I can stay zoomed in. Now, could I have used other things? Well, yeah, I could have probably used the lasso tool. So here, I could use this one. And I could have went in and rotated this a little bit. And try to get this in one foul stroke. Like that. So that's another alternative method besides the pen. This is nice for maybe clopping in the areas that need to be masked off. It also makes a really nice edge. So if I'm doing this right here, you'll see that edge is very crisp compared to the pen. But changing the focal point or focus focal shift on the pen will make a very sharp mask. Again, just in case, don't know the terminology here yet, um, if I hold control I get this and I get a really blurry type of mask. Okay, If I hold my focal shift I get a sharper edge. So turning focal shift to zero sometimes really is a smart idea when you're dealing with masks. Once you got the little areas concerned out of the way, you can then work on bigger areas using the lasso tool. Oops, yeah, you gotta really watch it going around very high corners with this thing too. If you're on an angle, you gotta make sure you're at a better angle of selection. There we go. Any little parts that you might have missed, you know, I would probably use the pen tool to get close. Turn the focal shift negative 100, and it's negative 100, not zero. There we go. Now I have that one little itty bitty section that needs a different type of texture involved. Okay, what what kind of texture can I put on it? I could put noise. I could put. Let's go to the noise brush. So instead of using the noise feature over here, I could put noise just in this little area. Okay, there we go. Crunches it up some, scale it off, and I can always save this as a later mask if I wanted to. By using this, you notice my mask had a little two little white areas that I missed. At least this way, I don't have to worry about those two little white areas. Sometimes applying noise to an overall surface can be damaging if you don't have things masked off correctly. And now you're starting to see that this all comes together because this little item actually lives on a layer that I can turn up and down. Cool stuff. Alright, let's go on to the next video.